Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Today, inshallah, bring you a quite important reminder, a reminder about difficulty and ease. We start off with this hadith in which it says the best of Islam is the gentle way free from difficulty. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever doesn't show mercy will not be shown mercy. And in the following ayah, Allah subhanahu wa himself says, Allah did not make any difficulty for you in religion. So Allah subhanahu wa wants the religion to be easy for us. And this is why when the, the Prophet ﷺ informed the Imams when they were leading the Salah to consider those who are in the Jama'ah, to consider the young and the old, those that were busy and those that were occupied with business and not to prolong it. Making it easy by allowing us to do the yum, dry ablution when we don't find water whilst we're traveling. So making it something that we can easily perform. So salah is, a farad, is an obligatory act and we have to perform it. But if we don't find water, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for us rather than asking us to go um, traveling to look for water. Whilst traveling, you also have the concession of fasting or leaving your fast. You have that concession made for you. You don't need to fast while you're traveling. And the Prophet ﷺ did specify that it doesn't, um, it doesn't, it's not an act that carries more virtue. It's not more pious to, to fast while you're traveling. Um, quite um, opposite to what many may think that it is more out of more piety if you do fast, but it was made, this, this was made easy for the people and the reward was not increased or decreased for somebody who didn't want to fast while traveling. Allah wishes, again, as we were repeating, that he wanted ease for Yenis, um, quoted in a different ayah. Again, Allah subhanahu wa repeats that he did not want to wish any difficulty for you. Aisha, she reported a hadith in which the Prophet said, in which she, sorry, said the Prophet ﷺ would choose between two matters, um, the easiest one, as long as it's, it was not sinful. So if you are faced with two options and you choose the one that's easier, as long as it is not sinful. So you can always go with this easiest option. Um, you don't need to go for the most difficult one. He was not, um, and he was the most strictest in avoiding the sinful matters. He himself didn't take revenge upon himself. So we know from the Quran that he was constantly insulted. He was made fun of. He was um, called offensive names. Well, he didn't take any revenge upon himself. But he did stand firm against those people who were fighting the deen, Islam, and fighting the Muslims, persecuting them. And that's what he stood for, the truth. He didn't stand to take any revenge upon himself. And we know the very well-known documented incident when he went to Taif to invite people to the deen in Islam, what happened? He was stoned by uh, the city and Jibreel Gabriel offered to even punish them on that account and he refused to take that or accept that punishment for them and was forgiving and forgave them for what they did to him. We have uh, students coming in uh, week in, week out, to read the Quran, many of you students that are attending the lessons are finding the reading of the Quran very difficult and you are struggling, you're struggling with the Quran, but know that with this difficulty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the ease of two rewards, so he rewards you for that, so the ease that you can get from reading the Quran is that knowledge that you are rewarded twofold, you have the two rewards, one for reading and one for struggling, so you know, mashallah, we have so many dedicated students that do come um, quite, you know, regularly attending classes, doing the extra practice outside of classes, uh, making sure that they do the homework, watching the videos, really making an effort and still struggling. And Quran is a big struggle and you may continue your, the rest of your life with this struggle, but alhamdulillah, you will continue gaining the two rewards throughout and uh, the, you know that's such a motivation that inshallah uh, i pray that all of you continue with this and um you know it, it is a virtue that you are getting gaining i may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you and just an encouraging note for you all to continue attending your classes and if you're somebody who hasn't yet come or attended and want to you know always have that uh, aim to begin coming well there's no greater time than the present you know whenever that class is on 
you know, come in. We always get in new students and we can accommodate you. So make sure that you are dedicating your time to read the Quran. Don't feel it's too difficult and give it up. Do not lose hope, inshallah. As Muslims, we should make things easy for people. We should not make them difficult. We should give good tidings to those um, who, who do such and do not discourage anybody. We shouldn't be frightening people, so don't alarm people. And there's a beautiful hadith in which it says, do not cause alarm among society. Do not make things difficult for people and make it easy. Now, I have so many uh, conversations with new Muslims, with people that probably want to become Muslim, but they are straight away quite quickly put off with the demands of this religion that people have put upon them. People go out when they're speaking to non-Muslims, what they forget to say to them is Islam is a religion, it's a way of life and you will grow into it. It is a transitional period, but if you begin to preach to people and say, right, you've got to give up um, X, Y, Z, you know, you've got to change your name, you've got to change your address, you've got to cut off from every, I mean, of course, this is not what Islam says, but if, you go, if, you, if you're going and making it almost that difficult for somebody, you're going to put people off from exploring, learning, um, or even reaching out to any other Muslim that can help them. And I have experienced this. I've experienced this with a lot of, non, a lot of new Muslims and lot, some non-Muslims that really want to learn about Islam, but refrain from accepting the deen because they're already being frightened by Muslims that have told them that Islam is a difficult religion or put upon them the obligations of the deen that they're not even obliged to follow at this present time because they haven't accepted the deen. Remember when uh, we talked in many previous examples that Islam is it, it, a transitional period. Well, this is why the Prophet ﷺ, when he sent delegations and he sent Mu'ad to Yemen, he said, call the people to Tawheed first. Once they accept, call them to Salah. Once they accept that, then call them to the other pillars. We don't go in so to speak, as heavy-handed, we need to be gentle with people and we need to invite people to the deen in a gentle manner. Yes, they may find it difficult to give up certain acts. I'm not saying don't call them sinful acts. Tell them that this is what Islam says. These are sins, eating pork, dating, drinking alcohol, you know, um, going clubs. All of it is this is unacceptable and they are sins. But don't cut people off if they're committing sins. Support them. New Muslims, uh, and even Muslims themselves, they need support. Don't be judgmental and don't cut people off. Let, allow people to, to make that transition themselves. Don't be judgmental and support. Do your best to support people. I know many times when I, I was doing my Islamic studies degree, I had Muslims come up to me and say to me that whenever we go to the prayer room, we don't wear a hijab. So when we go to the prayer room, the Muslim sisters, they look at us and they don't speak to us. And they look at us because we, we enter the prayer room without wearing a hijab. We take out our hijab, we put it on and we begin to pray. After we finish praying, we take off our hijab and we leave. I've heard this from many sisters who go in and are not welcomed because they don't feel they wear a hijab. And sometimes it may be that, you know, you're not, particularly going out your way to speak to them because you know that's not something you do I would still say when you see somebody entering the prayer room who doesn't wear a hijab go and make an effort to speak to them say oh you know assalamu alaikum I've not seen you here before or you, you just strike a conversation up with them as long as they feel that you're not being judgmental so be welcoming welcome people especially sometimes what I used to find when I was studying back at uni they, um, a lot of Muslim sisters used to come with non-Muslim friends who used to wait outside so I'd make an effort to go and speak to them and they'd say to me we're not Muslims and I would see a lot of Muslim sisters walking past and not stopping to talk if that was the other way around if you had ever gone into a Christian uh, place of worship a church you would see the hospitality people would rush to greet you because they know that they're representing a religion and they want positive representation for their religion but as muslims we're not really conscious about that we do represent our religion especially within the west when non-muslims are when we're interacting with non-muslims we do represent 
the deen because we carry it so visually. People see us and judge us straight away because of how we dress. So we are carrying the deen on our shoulders and we need to make sure that we communicate it in a positive manner to those. So please, whenever you see somebody trying to learn about Islam or any new Muslim coming into the deen, do not overpower them. I know one person who became a Muslim and started to distance herself from some of the Muslim rewrites, similar rewrites who had the same struggles, but they built uh, on their Iman over time, Alhamdulillah. But what they started to do was overpower this new Muslim, new revert. She almost felt overwhelmed and couldn't you know, take it anymore that she couldn't even speak to these people. And she narrowed her circle of French down. So she lost a lot of sport because she felt overwhelmed. It was, it was becoming too difficult. Do not present the deen as a difficult aspect. It's not supposed to be difficult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has not made the deen difficult for us. Allow people to learn about the deen and grow. Don't come down on them so heavy. So that comes to the last points that I want to make. Preaching with wisdom, have hikmah. This is what the Quran tells us, that we should have hikmah. Uh, not being harsh in our dawah with families or friends. Friends, we need to have beautiful words, um, reasoning with them and have hikmah. So beautiful words, reason and hikmah. This is all mentioned in the Quran when we do dawah. Um, a woman praying the hajjat every night is a virtuous act but can be overbearing. Now, this was a true story that one of my teachers told us when he was giving the lecture that a woman used to pray the hajjat and she, she, she used to get her young boy up to pray the hajjat every single night. In the middle of the night, she'd wake him up. As soon as this boy hit 16, because he, he was very young, so through Isis, his teenage years, he was forced to pray. He left his house and his mother was uh, shocked. She had no idea why her son would suddenly leave the house. When she started to tell them, oh, she used to wake him up at the hajjah and he used to pray, he was a good boy, why would he leave? Um, the scholar, he told her that she was overbearing. She put too much pressure on him. Don't put too much pressure on your children. Don't go to the extremes. Islam is wasat al tariq it is the middle path. Keep it as a middle path because it'll be more attractive. The minute you start to go to the extreme, even if it's doing the good acts, you know, even if you try to burden even yourself with the virtuous acts, it's going to be too difficult, let alone forcing those acts upon others. People before you perish due to excessiveness in religion. Do not be excessive in religion. Islam does not expect accept excessiveness, even if that is in good um, actions and this is why uh, the Prophet have said that these uh, there's a group of people the people who are the dogs of hellfire because they were so excessive in their religion uh, stoning the Jamara excessive in religion and practices um, by going and throwing big rocks which is not what uh, is expected um, throwing shoes again going to the extreme prolonging the salah not putting people off, as we mentioned, having rights over you. Your body has a right. Remember, you have to sleep. You have to give your family right, your body right. The extreme behavior is a lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge will lead you to extreme behavior. When you, when you meet people who are um, really balanced, who know the deen really well, you would, you would hear from them that they used to, when they start, first started learning about the deen, they would rush to the, the extreme behavior because they really didn't understand Islam. So that makes you in the middle path, being in the middle path. Um, somebody once said to me that they feel that um, when, you know, the way I carry my deen is very much, um, you know, it's very neutral and it, you know, it's, not, it's, not to the, it's not to the extreme, it's not too flexible. I'm not very, I am, I'm strict in many things, but I'm not to the extreme. I, it's very middle. And I said, what you see is not me, it's my religion. It's just the way it's supposed to be practiced, but not many people practice it like that. So for a non-Muslim to say to me that they see me in the middle path and they see that I'm practicing my religion and it's not very extreme and they think that it's a really nice way of doing it, um, it that is what Islam is supposed to be. Being gentle with children, as I said, not making them off with the hajjat every night or overburdening them, which will cause them to hate Islam. So don't overpower them. Make sure that you treat your children with mercy and gentleness. 
How did the Prophet ﷺ deal with the Bedouin who urinated in the masjid, in the mosque? He didn't shout at him, he didn't tell him off, he didn't shout down his, um, down, down across the masjid. He waited until he came over and he talked to him and he explained to him, you can't expect people to know what is right or wrong if you haven't informed them. And don't expect them to know by shouting at them when they've done something wrong. Sit them down and explain to them what they've done wrong and why it is an acceptable act. And this is, inshallah, a very important reminder, a reminder that we should all try and um, follow to be gentle. Not because a believer is not harsh with their tongue. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. A believer is not a coarse tongued, is not harsh with their approach. So make sure that you practice gentleness in the deen, that you are gentle and you give your dawah gently. And if anybody comes to you, please make sure that you represent Islam in a beautiful manner and don't overpower people, Muslims or non-Muslims, including children. Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.